Thank you very much. Um, Code Mantra is a publishing services and software company. Um, we, um, we do a lot of conversion. We've been doing conversion for 15 years in the United States and around the world. Uh, and we, op we offer a digital asset publishing platform, which publishers have been using throughout the United States and Great Britain. We have about 40 publishers using this platform now. Um, view it as a digital warehouse, our, our publishing clientele, distribute through us out into the marketplace. So we're very much at the front of the, um, the market, I think, in terms of some of its problems and what we've been seeing over the last few years with how publishers have struggled a little bit with their content. Um, I'm uh, probably the oldest guy. There's 700 of us or 800 of us in India. There's a few less of that in the United States. I'm probably the oldest guy in the company. So it's my privilege to sort of look back and take an historic perspective on things a little different than the rest of our team. Um, get to my glasses even, that's how old I am. Uh, the evolution of publishing has been a slow process up until now. Uh, it took 500 years for print technology spurred by economics to transform publishing into a mass medium. But even through though printed books, magazines, and newspapers are widely disseminated today, their reach and frequency uh, pales against the comparison of what the ubiquity of a digital publishing world will do. To scribes and clerics in the 15th century, Gutenberg's invention of movable type would have been a mutation, an abomination. Here is a process that imposed order and structure on the page. But these multitudinous pages were the result of mechanical repetition. Gone was the divine inspiration and the, that flows through the hands of the pious Scribners. And yet, here we are, for the first hundred years, printers struggled to imitate the illuminated manuscripts. Early topographers labored to hone cursive fonts, would best replicate the handwritten, handwritten ordained standard. At first, illustrations, decorative elements, marginalia, had to be hand-painted on the printed pages. Later, woodcuts and exlography became part of that process. By the 20th century, economic and cultural influences of a much expanded readership steered topography toward a simpler and more legible standard. While illustration still figures prominently on the printed page, I think we all can concur, much more attention has been devoted to typographical nuances of leading, spacing, line breaks, glyphs, ligatures. For contemporary book designers, white space is as important a design element as the choice of font and the placement of an illustration. Fast forward to 1995 and the rapid adoption of the web spawns a new technology that holds the potential to be every bit as revolutionary and evolutionary as Gutenberg's. If movable type brought structure to the page creation, XML has brought structure to content creation. In so doing, XML has brought a whole new definition to the term publishing. Output is no longer restricted to the printed page. Text and image are no longer the only components to be considered as publishing evolves into a digital form. And yet, there is something of a deja vu afoot here. As conversion houses and digital publishing services strive to recreate printed books in a digital form. Like those Gutenberg printers of 500 years ago, the compositors of digital books are compelled to recreate the same look and feel as, the printed, as their print pre precedent. One major publisher insists that its ebooks conform to the exact same look and feel of the print edition. They argue that the typography is their brand. At Code Mantra, we've had publishers argue that an ebook hyphenation and justification that fails to replicate the print is really a typo. It's not always clear to us the ramifications of XML have hit home with publishers and writers. Guys, the page is no longer essential. There's a whole new landscape to explore here. A digital story could be even more exciting, a page turner. We have yet to see the form of a digital novel or the work of digital nonfiction take, take hold. One can only anticipate that some future Capote or Joyce will redefine the genre. I think it's safe to say that a precedent-setting work has yet to arrive. In the meantime, let's go slow on the enhanced ebook editions. Do we really think that the world of YouTube and Facebook, an ebook version of the latest New York Times bestseller with a talking head video of the author is going to be regarded as novel, no matter what our definition of the word. On the other hand, some plausible enrichments to the digital edition 
that could make loyal fans clamor for a download. There is probably no more appropriate marriage of digital type and audio than Molly Bloom's soliloquy. But if you're sitting on a subway, you best use the head handset. Got five minutes. The apps may well be the vessel to formulate. Uh, there we go. And apps may well be the best vessel to formulate um, XML clay. Perhaps the most expansionary feature of uh, digital publishing is the potential for infinite time-space continuum. Publishing under a subscription model can hold readers captive to an ever-expanding stream of knowledge and entertainment. We certainly still are at the opening chapters of this new era in publishing, and where I think the evolutionary doctrine of Darwin most, uh, is most appropriate. It's not the strongest who survive, nor the most intelligent, but the ones who are most, most adaptable to the change. It's five minutes. Thank you.